Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. We're going. Where we got? We got. We got knocked up. Well, hello there, Star Wars Explained. How are you? I'm good, Ken. Yeah. The hate in you is strong. The hate? Let it go. The no. anger. No. Oh, no, no, no. Just let it go. No, no, no. Star Wars isn't real, Alex. It's just something both of us know really well. I have no anger and hate in me. I have, I have truth. Destiny. Go, That's what I have inside of me. I have... Ability to take away that title from you. That's what's gonna happen here today, all right? Y you okay with that? You want this, don't you? Okay, he's doing, he's he's doing quotes a lot. He's doing a little movie. Doing a little, doing a little, doing a little we get, I get it. We get it. We don't need to explain to us. We don't need that okay, explain we, to yeah, us. Yes, that belt is mine. I'm gonna go win it in there, all right? So quit hold it, holding it in front of me, right in my eyes, making me covet. That belt, okay? Sorry, just, sorry, just, you got it, you got it, man. Don't worry. If you want it, just come take it. Okay. <laughs> Who's this something kid? I Let's learned back in the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for teaching me that. I definitely fared better than the last guy I tried that. Celebration 2017. Are you guys ready for the Star Wars movie trivia showdown? The legendary hit boss, Ken Nobson! You might know him as Star Killer, Sam Witwer! the order shields up just before the falcon buzzed the star destroyer's bridge uh, one to captain niet no. uh, sam witwer has been eliminated two one and john kennedy steven sandler and ken james arnold Taylor. and your winner and Five competitors are going for that coveted prize. If they win here today, they will get a shot at the reigning champion. You're kidding me. <laughs> Captain Nita. And you The Pit Boss Wow. You guys have your history. Any words on your challenger here for the uh, the Star Wars Spectacular? Star Wars Spectacular, Shrine Out Spectacular. Obviously, good luck. Uh, good. Who's uh, who's the loser who won? Everybody here was a good Star Wars competitor, yeah. but I have the best. So with further ado, here's my guy. Who's this? What? what? No, get out! This is my time. I have new friends now, I have new power, and this, for once in my life, is about me. How many times has normal rate did Han offer to pay Jabba if he would spare his life? Sam, pick a trip. And you're ah! We saw a faulty system. I saw time running down. There was, this was unclear, this was a faulty format. The system is trying to hold us. Down. Would you guys come back? Throw your hat in the contender ring? Yeah, this isn't over. I'm coming back. I still want that belt. You've got, from Star Wars Explained, Alex Damon is here. I'm here for redemption. I want to try again. You picked a good night to witness destiny. What is the first line Luke says to Leia in A New Hope? I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Ken Napsok has been eliminated! In the Battle of Hoth, the snow speeders fly in what attack pattern? Delta. And your winner, Alex the Demon! Demon! He's done it. The kid's done it. He's playing Sam Whitworth for the belt. Listen, uh, I just...
spoke with Sam Whitworth, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, fortunately, he just booked a really, really great job. That's awesome. Un- That's awesome. Unfortunately, that means he's gonna be out of the schmodown for about three to four months. Tell Sam congrats on the gig, okay. and I, we will we will see him as soon as we can. That's not gonna happen. He either shows up or he's stripped of the belt. It's as simple as that. I was having a conversation with myself and I decided that uh, that I think it's in the best interest of the league to give Alex the belt and then Sam can try to get it back Did from him later like in the year. It's a split personality or just, something? You're having a conversation a, with yourself? And if he's not gonna be there, then Alex is getting the belt and that's it. Unfortunately, Sam Whitwer is not able to compete for the next couple of months uh, because He's unable to fulfill his duties, and so it's all yours. Congrats! No, I think I need to earn it. I can't just take it. That's not fair. I'll try to find somebody. Uh, if you can make it back for the collision, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a competitor. He put an open challenge to whoever could take him on in Star Wars trivia, and once you know it, Mr. Rooster Teeth himself, Bruce Green, stepped up to the plate. Bail Organa. That's that correct. is correct. No. <laughs> Chewbacca. It is uh, not Chewbacca. I mean, <laughs> that's classified. Ronto, Han, Jerjerod, Chewbacca, blue. 22 to 6. Alex Damon, what was your answer? Lor Santeca. All right, and Bruce? Old Man Jedi. And your winner! And- I mean, I've wanted this belt for a long time, but I'm not gonna feel like it's really mine until I face Sam. Hello, sheep. Y'all having a good time? Good, because you have only one man to thank for this anarchy, Mike. Kalanowski! Star Wars, open spot, right? I got someone for you. You you got Hidalgo? Who? No, I ain't got Filoni? No. Favreau? No. Who? Napsa. What? No, 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 no. What are you saying? It's gonna be great. Fans gonna love it. They're gonna eat this stuff up. All right, all right, I'm gonna get out of here. Does that sound good? You gotta work it down? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Great to see you again, pal. I don't care how Ken gets a shot at the title. I just want to play. This belt does not leave my hands. Alex, you, sir, are like this toy. A fun little reminder of what we're here for, but not the real thing. The harder you make it, the stronger you make me, Ken. Tonight, I am death. Emma Fife <laughs> goes and she is the new commissioner. I'll explain She's how that's going to work. She's a commissioner video one. She crushed it. She did, and she defeated myself, Thad Williams, huh? and, and Finstock. But then the talk of the match is of, of the video is obviously the Shirewolves who defended yeah. their title in a battle, a war against who's the boss. Angelo, we lost. Five rounds. But the thing that was the most shocking was, once again, that happened last year, Andrew Guy this time did probably the most despicable thing that we will and have ever seen. Breaks furniture. Well, but he did it by turning on his friend, yep. by uh, someone who yep. has been a brother to him. Someone he, he clearly he didn't like the idea that, that Ben Bateman wanted to stick with Mark Riley. So he again committed an act of violence. It 
something that I'm going to have to deal with after this season is over, something that will be dealt with, and Ben Bateman is okay. We have checked on him. Him and Mark Riley and Finstock are, are fine. They are okay, but Andrew Guy uh, has left the premises, and we will, we will be dealing with him in next season. Yes, we will, and I want to give a shout-out to Alex Marzone, our PA, who is currently at Ikea getting us a new table. Thank yeah. you, Alex. Well, thank you to Alex for that, and thank you guys as now. Now, listen, we're not over. We're, we are. This is oh. our third match. Our third match, and what a match it is. It's the Star Wars Championship, and last year's Star Wars match was easily – not even match of last year's spectacular, but maybe one of the best matches we've ever seen. And it had the then champion Ken Knapsack yeah. against Sam Whitmer in an Iron Man match. Fast forward a year later, Ken is not the champion. Alex Damon is, but Ken, because of who he was friends with before this event, he knows people. Got himself into this title match. Alex Damon. Ken Knapsack, the last work of Mike Kalinowski, and we have ourselves a Star Wars title match. Yeah, and look, I, I got to tell you, all props to Ken. Uh, outside of this competition in this league, I'm uh, dear friends with the Afternoon Podcaster, but I got to tell you, Christian, I think that I should be more nervous as to whether this match can live up to last year's spectacular, more so than Alex Damon should be for Ken Knapsack. I find Ken to be a great performer. I smell rustiness on him, and I don't think Alex Damon can ever be accused of being rusty when it comes to Star Wars knowledge. The guy knows stuff through and through through, but I do wonder how The Last Jedi or possibly Solo might factor in to this particular match. Well, already factored in because we saw Alex Damon who projected himself from rum, one room into the next, and he was able to do it right before this match. It was a very <laughs> impressive feat. Um, but now we are going to get into the interviews. They had a lot to say. Here we go. Here we are, the Schmodown Spectacular, the big end of the season that you all love. What do I got in my hand? I got a Star Wars toy because I'm a Star Wars fan here to compete for Star Wars trivia. I don't care about this whole political behind the scenes corruption. I don't care how Ken gets a shot of the title. I just want to play. That's all I've ever wanted to do is talk about Star Wars and answer Star Wars questions because that's, you know, all I know how to do. Well, Alex, here's the thing about you. You, sir, are like this toy. A fun little reminder of what we're here for, but not the real thing. Ken obviously knows his stuff. I won't lie and pretend that I think I have this in the bag. I think that it's very possible he could beat me. I am worried about the speed round in particular because I've seen him perform at the Iron Man and he was very fast. He closed that gap between him and Sam. So, and I feel like speed is a weakness on my part. When it comes to being a champion, we all know that you've been running. We all know that you've been choosing the alternate path taking you away from real contenders. Myself, even my good buddy and former foe Joseph Scrimshaw, he deserves the title more than the people you defeated to get here. You know, I heard that Ken was saying I'm a fake champ, but I just want to ask him, was it fake when I beat him at the live event? It's not going to be fake when I beat him today. Everywhere I go, whether it's beautiful downtown Burbank, wonderful Orlando, Florida, or even other cities like Chicago, New York, it doesn't matter when people see me, they call me champ. They want me to have the Star Wars belt. Ken, this belt does not leave my hands. I'm gonna hold on to it as long as I can, and I'm gonna hold on to it so I can face Sam Witwer someday in the future. You're not taking it from me. Alex, I lost to you at the Triple Threat Live event on a question that quite frankly I blanked on, and that happens. Whitworth's done that, I did that, but you know what? It doesn't erase what I know inside, and what I know inside is that you can't run anymore. I'm here, and that title belongs to me. Obviously, Ken is talking about wanting that belt back. Doesn't think he lost it in the first place. Um, respects Alex Damon, but wants to prove that he is better and that he should be the champion. And Alex Damon, he just wants to play, Mark. He just wants to show his knowledge. That's why he's here. Flew in from Atlanta just for this match, just to make sure that he could play. And he also has said it many times, the match he wants is Sam Witwer. But if Ken Napsok wants to get in his way on the, on the path to find Sam Witwer to get that ultimate challenge, he's ready for it. Yeah, Alex Damon, he enjoys a few different things. He enjoys 
enjoys flying to LA, getting belts, and then flying back to Atlanta. Will he do that again today? Will he retain the belt or will Ken Knapsack steal it and bring it back to the dark side? Christian, I feel pretty good about today. Yeah, and here are some memorable moments. Alex Damon, who lasted to the very last question against Sam Witwer in the triple threat. He won the other triple threat and he won by a knockout, winning the championship at the Collider Collision. Ken Napsok has won the championship before, also defeated Sam Witwer in the big match at Celebration last year, was part of the big Iron Man match, and is the manager of Corruption. So those are the, those are the things to know about these competitors as we get into it, Mark. Uh, yeah, I was ready before. I needed to take a breath. Thanks for spotting me. Good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Great kid, don't get cocky. Five rounds for the Star Wars Championship of the World. Introducing first, the challenger. Representing corruption. Led to the ring by the Cobra Chance Ellison and Mike the Killer Kalinowski. With a record of one win, two defeats, he is the former movie trivia schmodown Star Wars champion of the world, the pit boss, Ken Napsack. There's Chance. Hey, look, pissed off Kalinowski. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Ken Napsack. This is Ken. Huff is Ken. Oh, he took his sunglasses off at you. Yeah. A sign of aggression. The challenger coming out here, too. I just have fun. There's bulls on you now, Ken. I like it. Yeah, look it, at you. Is yeah. Ken wearing the mask from the bad guy of Willow? That's what he was. That's what he wore at the live event. He's wore those at two live is events. Is that Bane from Batman? I don't think so. This is a Star Wars match, is it not? It is. And his opponent... Representing... Star Wars Explained. With a record of two wins, one defeat with two knockouts, he is the reigning, defending Star Wars Champion of the World, Alex the Demon Damon. There's the champ. There's Alex champ. Damon. Here he is. He's Showing the, show the belt. The belt. So they tried to take it from him. They tried to take it from him. Couldn't do it. He went right through him. Oh, boy. How does he get that belt through TSA? Not sure. All right. So, oh, look at He's got the dice. I love it. He's oh, got the dice. isn't that nice? Nice that he's got the Alex dice. Alex Damon putting the dice. That's a nod to his favorite sitcom, come the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. All right. So, Mark, our competitors have sat down. The challenger has sat down. The champion has sat down. And we are ready to go here. Five rounds for the Star Wars Championship of the World. How does round number one work? Uh, we're seated as well. Round number one is going to be ten questions from ten different corners of the Star Wars movie trivia showdown galaxy. As soon as you hear the question, which is asked to the field, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. you got 15 seconds to do so. Once we address you by name, please show what you wrote to the camera on your whiteboard, and then also please verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question in round number one, and there is no stealing in round number one. Please write your answers as legibly as possible. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the five rounds of the championship match. You need a question repeated, you didn't hear it right, or you just want to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to use at any point during the five rounds. All right, with that, the challenge, are you ready? Yes. Champion, are you ready? I've got a really good feeling about this. Then let's get ready to schmoot All right. All right. Here we go, gentlemen. Question one is in the category of Revenge of the Sith. What Jedi Master does Chancellor Palpatine accuse of treason? Ah, oh, going to be back at the desk. Yeah, yeah no. This is took, a, took a water break. Five. Heard about some things. Four, yeah. Some, got a cookie. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Alex. Mace Windu. Yes, Ken. Mace Windu. Tied up. All right. They've seen the film. Your next question comes from Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. And your question is, who abducted Shmi Skywalker in Attack of the Clones? It's probably Andrew Guy. Uh, knowing him, yeah. I would put money on that fact. Five. Does look good in a jacket. Four, I got to say. 
Three, two, one. Ken Napsok. Tuscan Raiders. Yes, sir. Alex. Tuscan Raiders. Two, two. It is, in fact, <laughs> Tuscan Raiders. Fun fact, they ride right. Banthas to work. Return of the Jedi is the next category. What article of clothing does Luke begin wearing before he gets to Dagobah and wears for the remainder of the film? You know, Return of the Jedi, I've thought about it. I've sat down, taken many visits to the toilet. Inferior My to Empire. My favorite movie. Five. Better than Empire. Four. You're crazy. Three. It's better. Two. It's one. Alex Damon. A glove. Yep. Ken. A black glove. That's correct. Oh! Oh! That's correct. Ken! That's Out correct. adjectiving Alex Damon. That's right. Three, three. Three, three. Uh, Next question. <laughs> you're sick. It's you. This is from the Phantom Menace, which I camped out for for three days. Is that true? Uh, it changes. Fine. <laughs> what is the name of the spaceport settlement that's the home of Watto and Anakin Skywalker? Yeah, I think I camped out for like eight hours, but then as felt like three days. as you matriculate away from yeah, high school, I get it. that makes sense. Five, four, three, two, one. Ken Napsok? Mos Espa. Yep. Alex. Mos Espa. Four, four. No. <laughs> All right. All right. The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens is the next category. How long has Maz Kanata run her watering hole on the planet Takadana? We'll give or take a day. Yeah. I, I always like that character. Five. You see more. Four, three, two, one. Alex. One thousand years. Yes, Ken. One thousand. Tie years. game. Wow. All five, right. five. Halfway through round number one, they're throwing perfect games. Nerd alert, am I right? <laughs> Your next question comes from Star Wars Episode Four. That is A New Hope, if you're keeping score at home. How many Banthas did Luke see through his binoculars in Episode Four, A New Hope? Yeah, it's really, it's going to come down to who misses first. Yeah, as Joseph Scrimshaw once five, said, who farts four, first? Three. Two. Paraphrasing Joe. Fine. One. Pens down. Ken. Two. Yes. Alex. Two. Tie game. <laughs> Ken making a face as though yep. he smelled a fart as he answered that. <laughs> you know how hard it was for three. Next question. Empire Strikes Back. The best movie in the franchise. Inferior what, to Jedi. What character? What character has the first line of dialogue in the Empire Strikes Back? Give you 20 seconds for this one. Because <laughs> it's because you like the movie more. Yeah. Fine. We you chair people. Everyone should replay it in their heads. <laughs> Five, four. So good you'd know it quick. Three, two, one. Alex. Luke Skywalker. Yes, Ken. Echo three to Echo seven. Luke Skywalker. Seven, seven we are. Okay. All right. <laughs> Your next question comes from Rogue One, which is a Star Wars story. Oh. And here. Question is. When Krennic approached Galen at the beginning of Rogue One, Galen said that Krennic was confusing peace with what? Remember the, uh, went to the premiere of that movie, you and me? Yeah. And then afterwards, they played Van Halen's jump. Five, four. post-premiere. Sure. Three. Of a Star Wars movie. Two, one. And Alex. You have to start somewhere. Terror. Yes, Ken. Tyranny. Oh, 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 and that's, that's the match. The that's that's the match. It might be. Goodbye, first, everyone. First point. First point that, that Ken misses, but Alex has not missed. And here's the next question. The last, you're going to, there's 10 questions in this round. So Alex could still be seeing yes. a bonus question by himself. Yes. 10 questions here. The last Jedi. When Luke asked Rey what she knew about the Force, she replied, it's a power that Jedi have that let them control people and blank. It's a power the Jedi have that lets them control people and blank. It's tough. You just got to keep pace here. You mm -hmm. don't have to be tied with Alex, but you got to keep pace. Five, four, three, two, one. Alex Damon. Make rocks float. That's incorrect. Ken. I told Skaliscu no quotes. Move rocks. It's mm. make things float. Make things Makes float. Make things float. Make things float. So Alex is not perfect here. Things. Eight, seven. Make things float. float. Rocks can be things, but yeah. other things can also be things that right. are not rocks. Next question here. Next question. This is a Patreon question. The following question comes from us to, from Jonathan Peck. Jonathan Peck, thank you so much. You all can feel free to applaud for Jonathan Peck. He's a Schmodown patron. Thanks for supporting the movie trivia, Schmodown patron. Now, uh, Jonathan Peck, he supports the show a fair amount. He's a good fella. He wanted this question in the category of Solo, a Star Wars story. 
came out earlier if you missed it. In Solo, a Star Wars story, Han grew up as an orphan on what planet? Oh, we went to the premiere of that, too, we if anybody's keeping score. It's oh. only one point here. Difference. Five, four, three, two, one. Ken. Corellia. Yes. Corellia. There you go. So Damon keeps right. his lead. Nine, eight. Cool. Nine, eight as we get into round number two. Damon misses once. Knapsack misses twice. And we have a nine to eight game as we get into the second round. Mark, how's that go? It is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, justice, and for a Star Wars match, destiny for both of the competitors. Each one gets a spin at that their wheel. And because this is a Star Wars match, you're going to be facing five questions from the category that you spin. If you don't like the movie that you spun, I, I, I'd call you a liar because it's all Star Wars movies. But if you want a different category, you are allowed one mulligan, and you can spin again. Once you settle on your movie, the five questions are each worth two points. Unless you ask us for multiple choice, then the value of the question is one point. In round number two, there is stealing available. If you miss a question, you can steal it. You miss a question, he can steal it. And we're off and running, Christian. The person in the lead is going to get the first crack at it. If they want it, that's Alex Damon. Would you like to spin first or defer to Ken Knapsack? I'll let Ken go first. All right, Ken's okay. going to go first. Ken, wheel, not the pegs, please. Ken is going to head up there. Ken looks focused. I haven't seen this amount of focus on Knapsack in a long time. Well, I think he just want. I think it's like Rocky. He's looking to go the distance. Do you think he watched one of the Rocky movies recently in between Star Wars viewings? He's just hoping that Damon slips up. That's all. He's got to hope that Damon slips up. I mean, they're mostly Star Wars film categories, but then you also have like a heroes and villains. Right. That could throw a movie quotes that could throw Ken Knapsack off. So it's coming around. This is looking like a Star Wars. Phantom he know, Menace. He knows episode well, one pretty well. What Phantom he Menace. What's he gonna do? He's, He's gonna, gonna take keep. It. I got it. All right. All right. Keep. Ken, you're gonna get. Ken, you'll get five. You'll get five questions. Five questions for the Phantom Menace here. Alex has a chance to steal if Ken misses it. Remember, you have multiple choice, and you have all three JTE rules. Both guys do. Okay, here we go. Phantom Menace. Five questions. Ken, how many Republic dictaries did Qui Gon tell Watto he had for the Nubian hyperdrive? Multiple choice. A, 20,000. B, 10,000. C, 40,000. D, 50,000. 20,000? Correct. Tie game there from Ken. All right. Just one, the one. Just one. one. He has for multiple choice. Just one, fellas. One, one, nine to nine. Question two. Who greeted Jar Jar, Qui Gon, and Obi Wan when they arrived at Gungan City? Chief, uh, excuse me, Captain Tarples. Final answer? Yes. Captain Tarples is correct. Yeah! Okay. Who the hell knows Captain Tark? I know. All right, number three. What is the name of the track on the Phantom Menace soundtrack that spoiled Qui Gon's death? As it did for me, Qui Gon's funeral? It's incorrect. Oh. Qui Gon's noble end? That's correct. Oh. Two point steal. Oh, good one. Two point steal. Big oh. miss there. Yeah. All right, two more questions here. Ken, whose pod racer blows up on the starting line during the big race? Uh, ben Quadraneros. That's correct. Back in the lead, Napsuck. He's got yeah. one question remaining. Final question, Ken, here. Where does Qui-Gon try to use the Jedi mind trick on Watto? I don't know how to answer specifically. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Watto's junkyard. That's correct. Two points. He got it. Two points. And so now Ken Napsog, a four-point advantage over Alex Damon. Look, Christian, sometimes if you're the underdog, it's nice to just see that you have a lead on the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. But now Alex Damon does have a spin at the wheel whenever you are ready, sir. Well, that's the problem, though, is because that, that miss by Ken there. And the could, steal by Alex. Yeah, could, could, yeah. Hurt, could hurt tremendously here because we haven't seen a flaw in Alex Damon yet. No. So what doesn't he know? I don't, no. I mean, I don't I know. I mean, he thought rocks were things. Rocks are yeah. things, just not the yeah. completion of the quote. But if he gets a category he likes here, look out Ken Knapsack. But the betting round, maybe it catches him up. We're going to see as it turns back around here. Coming around. Could be careening towards movie quotes if it gets that far. Return of the Jedi. Uh, no, it's the Force the Awakens. The Force Awakens. Force Awakens. Sure. He's going to go for it. <laughs> okay. The Force Awakens. Five questions. The first of five, Alex, for two points. What creature does Finn share a drink with on Jakku? A hapabore. Oh it God. is a hapabore. Yeah, that's true. Anybody knows that. Yeah. All right, you're within two of Ken. You have four questions remaining. Your next one. In The Force Awakens, what planet is the Resistance base located on? Dakar. It is Dakar. Wow. We will not ask you for spelling. 
D apostrophe Q A R. <laughs> they don't care about U's in outer space. Right. Not D dot. No. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> Your next question. In The Force Awakens, how does Maz Kanata refer to Chewbacca? Her boyfriend. And I want to see that. Yep. <laughs> Two points for Alex Damon. And he finds himself back in his usual chair. That would be the lead. Your penultimate question in round number two. Who was Han and Chewie delivering the three Rathars to? King Prana. It That's was correct. King Prana. Last one. That's right. Last one. All right, Alex, your last question. Not counting young Ray's screams, who's the voice first heard in Ray's Force vision after she touches Luke Skywalker's lightsaber? Five. Four, three, two. Luke Skywalker. That is incorrect for the steel Ken. Two points. Yoda. What wow. a steal Big that steal. was. 1917. Screams Shoes. voice. Wow. You got to really slow wow. that track down. I can't tell you how crucial that steal was because now it's only two points going into the betting round here, Mark. I think you, did, you just did tell us how crucial that steal it's was. It's really crucial because 1917, instead of being down by mm -hmm. a lot more, he is now only down by two as we get into the third round, the betting round. How's that go? In the betting round, Alex Damon, because he's in the lead, is going to get back up on the wheel and spin it yet again. Now, whatever category this lands on, it is going to be the betting round, and the betting round works as thus. Once you settle on a category, you're going to write down how confident you are by a show of your points. You can wager zero points. You can wager three points, two or one. If you get the question that we then ask correct, you gain that many points. If you get it wrong, you do lose that many points. So you are actually betting real points. Alex, at your leisure, sir. There's the spin on the wheel. Alex round and Damon. Round it goes. And, Alex um, Damon. Yeah, he's, I mean, look, that was the first time that Alex Damon actually looked human when he missed a, a question. That's right. You wonder if that, if that miss affects Alex more or affects Ken more in terms confidence. of a confidence boost. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and it looks like it's going to be Rogue One. Rogue One. <laughs> All right, guys, it's Rogue One. So. so please write down the amount of points you want to wager, and then please show them to the incredible assistant RB3, who has a new movie, Flick Ticks, starring Ken Knapsack. Thank you. All right. Rogue One. What was the name of the rebel that Cassian killed so that he could escape from the stormtroopers at the beginning of Rogue One? Five. Very tough. It is. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. Ken, pens down. And we have Alex Damon. How many points? Three. And your name was? Tivik. And Ken, how many points? It's not Pablo Hidalgo. How many points? Three. Three. Damon got it correct. Knapsack missed it. So I mean, it was not Pablo Hidalgo. 22-14. It was it was a two point. Now it is eight points. Ooh. And Knapsack has to do well in this speed round or Damon is going to be looking pretty going into the fifth round. I mean, he already looks pretty. The kid looks like a junior in high school, but he is a stone-cold <laughs> assassin when it comes to Star Wars, Christian. In the lightning slash speed round, it's also known as the buzzer round. We're going to get the buzzer set. We'll be right back. It's the buzzer round, and Christian Harloff is going to be reading all five speed round questions. I got my carrot field eyes trained on the buzzers. As soon as the question's asked, you may hit the buzzer at any point if you think you know the right answer. But keep in mind, if you get the question right, you get a point. If you miss it, you lose a point, and you must answer it within one Mississippi, two Mississippi. That's why we call it the speed round. Alex, you good? Good. Ken Knapsack, you yes. decent? Yes, sir. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right, guys. Question one. Who raises their blaster rifle at Bausch for a threatening job? Alex, Boba Fett. Correct. What vehicle does Ray hope to use to escape the First Order on Jakku? Ken. Quad jumper. Yep. Who said somebody has to save our skins? In Alex. Leia. Yep. Who voiced Darth Maul in the Phantom? Alex. Oh, Peter Sarafunet. Sarah Finnewitz. Uh, I can't give it to him. He, he kind of tripped, and so he didn't yeah, get it within the point two away. seconds. 23. 23 points there. All right. Last question in the speed round. Tan Wee and Lama Su are... Kamen Owens. What was, what was that? Yep. Kamen Owens. 
the question that's incorrect. We're saying they were from what planet? Hmm. Yeah. So he lose 22. Yeah. So Ken Give still has okay. seven points. Yeah. Seven points. He still has a seven point lead. Damon could spend that there. He, you know, jumped a little bit at the speed round. Yeah, but, but the speed round is, is what we maybe thought Alex might struggle with just because of the strength of Ken yep. Knapsack having such a quick comedic mind. Yep. And he didn't buzz in all that much. Alex got the buzz in. It's just that the questions weren't always accurate. But like you said, Christian, it's like we never played a speed round. We are back to, yeah. well, a seven point advantage. So Ken did pick up a point. I think again, Ken was probably a little gun shy because right now we have a seven point lead as we get to the final round, fifth and final round. Ken has to hit all three of his questions here in order to stay in the game. So Mark, how does it work? Okay, Ken and Alex, we have come to the belt deciding round. It is round number five because this is a championship match. Here's how we determine the questions that you are asked that will determine your destiny. You each give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. Okay, each number you give us corresponds to a different slate up here at the answer desk. Your first question is worth two points, your next question three points, and your last question is worth five points. And like we said, Ken's gonna have to hit all three of these or at least his last two, and that depends maybe more on what Alex does, but Alex, you're gonna give us your three numbers first because you are currently enjoying a seven point advantage. Let's go three, two, and seven. Three, two, and seven. Thought he was going the, one there. Three, two, and seven for the champion and for the challenger. We're going to go eight, 13, five. Eight, 13, and five for the challenger. Ken okay. just seems lost like he can't even count yeah. correctly. All right, Ken, you're going to start here. You're going to start here, and it is The Last Jedi. <phone rings> Who did Snoke refer to as a rabid cur? Uh, General Armitage Hux. Correct for two points. Okay. <laughs> he got his first name. Can we do one more point for that? All right, Ken. 13 is a category of droids. Category of droids. What was the malfunction of the first R2 unit Uncle Owen bought along with C-3PO? Uncle Owen, this one's got a bad motivator. Correct. Yeah. All right. So Ken Napsok giving himself a chance to get into the lead here. If he hits his five-pointer, it bounces back to Damon. If he misses it, Alex Damon retains the title. All right, Ken, you had category five, New Hope. New Hope. Here you go. All right, Ken. While tending to the droids, C-3PO asked Luke if he could help him in any way. Luke responded by saying, not unless you can blank, blank, or blank. What were two of the three things that Luke mentioned? 20 seconds for this one. Speed up the harvest and teleport me off this rock. Correct. Yes! Wow. Correct. Ken keeps all in the there. the time, we would have taken as well. So Ken, hit, Ken hit all three. <laughs> Ken hit all three. So now Can Alex Damon. Alex Damon having a chance here. Let's see what happens. That's right. I mean, Ken Knapps, like you thought maybe going into this, he wanted to be teleported off this rock himself, but he shows a lot of fight, a lot of moxie, a lot yep. of heart, and he ends up currently enjoying a three-point advantage over Alex Damon, who now will answer his first question. In round number five, Alex, you selected number three for your two-point question. Uh, that corresponds up here at the answer desk to vehicles and weapons. These could be vehicles or weapons. <laughs> and your question is? What is the name of the shuttle that transported Han and the crew to Endor? Tiderium. Correct. Yes, it is. There you go. For two points, he's on the verge of victory. So now if Damon hits this, he retains the title. If he misses it, he goes to the five-pointer to try to win it there. Category number two. Number two, and Alex Damon from Atlanta chose the number of Matt Ryan, the Falcons quarterback. That's why I did it. Three points. <laughs> oh. And Matt Ryan could give you the victory. Here's your question. Two Wookiees escort Yoda to an escape pod on Kashyyyk. Chewbacca and Tarful. And your winner! <laughs> and still! Movie wow. trivia slowdown! Star Wars <laughs> champion of the world! Alex the Demon Damon! Alex wow. Damon does it. Ken Napsok, though. Hell of a battle there, too.
great battle by yeah. Kent. Did you see, did, did you catch a great sportsmanship at the end? A nice change from recent events here in the Schmodown. Kent shaking the hand of Alex Damon. And the, the, it, Kent had a smile on his face, yeah. you know, because he looked him in the, he looked him down the eye, down the barrel. He came out of this match unscathed, his reputation intact. He lost, but who did he lose to? Alex Damon, who has become some sort of a mythological creature in the world of the movie trivia Schmodown. He wins again. He's flying that belt back to Atlanta. He probably checks it at the desk, I imagine. Maybe so, but look, this was a great battle. Ken fought back valiantly. It was, mm -hmm. it was 10 points that he scored in that last round. You just you can't you can't let up that many points to Alex at all because he can make you pay for it. He did, um, but corruption. Now they missed their first shot. Now it's Mike Kalinowski is going to be facing Mark and Opic for the Energy Championship. We'll see if they'll be able to do that. But Jen Sturger has Ken Knapsack and Alex Damon. Here we go. What's up, movie trivia showdown fans? Jen Sturger here with Alex Damon. This has got to be getting heavy by this point. I still don't know how to hold it right. It's just so <laughs> unwieldy. Oh, but it's an amazing belt. So much better than yeah. the last one we had. Um, Alex, that was incredible. I think every match that you have, I become more and more impressed with you. Um, I'm starting to wonder, like, are you a savant? Well, I guess kind of. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you don't ask a man if he's a savant. <laughs> like an idiot savant? Yeah, I guess. But <laughs> I mean... You know, I, this is just what I do all day, every day. It's it's hard to stump me. Yeah. But I still didn't feel like I played my absolute best. No, I was going to ask you about that. You know, I did it when it came down to the speed round. Were you just feeling like, oh, I've got so much like leeway. I'm just going to go for it and buzz in. And even if I don't get the answer, it's still better than letting him score points. Is that like what the strategy was by that point? I heard someone in the crowd go, that's a good strategy. And that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> I was just like. I saw the strategy how, is to answer them all right. Right. I, I saw how quickly Ken was answering questions in his Iron Man match with Sam, and I know that he's fast, so I just kind of, if I had an inkling of what I thought the answer might be, I went for it because I didn't think I could beat him otherwise. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've watched you play in the three-way match at, uh, at the live event, and then I saw you dismantle Bruce Green. I think his body is buried somewhere I'm so sorry, in this Bruce. studio. <laughs> sorry, Bruce. Um, and now, Ken, can anyone beat you? Well, you know, there's someone that I think might be able to, and I still want to crack at him. So, Sam Witwer, you know, if you're watching, I don't know if this is possible, but I think he might be at Star Wars Celebration. I'm going to be at Star Wars Celebration. Maybe the scheduling could work out. I would love to take you on while we're all there to celebrate Star Wars anyway. Oof. Star Wars celebration just got a little intense. Good luck. Thank you. Ken, that was a rough one. That was a rough one to watch. Jennifer, I, uh, I, I got to admit, I am pretty defeated. I'm proud. I know what I'm capable of. Sometimes you rush in there. Sometimes there's things you know or don't know, and it, you, in the moment you'll find out. And I answer some great questions. Uh, but here's the truth. Here's the truth of the situation. Uh, we're not done today, more on that in a second. We may have lost this battle, but there's still a war to win. But I will say that I, uh, I, Yoda said it best about mentors and teachers. We are what they grow beyond. And, and Alex, as a young competitor in this league, as someone who I helped bring in, and he's got a successful career. Uh, he and his wife Molly run a great channel. Uh, I just think in terms of Schmodown, I, I, I brought him in, and I mentored him, and I helped uh, get him ready. And this is a case of someone moving past their teacher. And I, it might be tough, but I have to accept that, and that's what today was about for me. But let's be honest, like your, your final round, if you gave me final round Ken the entire match, I think we would have been looking at a much closer result. Final round, Ken, is, is probably why I've been divorced seven times, but I will tell you that uh, I feel confident it's that last shot on the golf course that brings you back for more, mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I think I know what I'm capable of, and I don't know if I'm capable of defeating Alex Damon. I believe Sam Witwer is, and I would absolutely buy a ticket to Chicago, get some pizza, and then watch their match. I heard their deep dish is pretty amazing. I, let's just do a show about that. <laughs> oh, so obviously today's been kind of a rough day for corruption, Mike. Um, you're, you're kind of the last hope here. Am I wrong? 
I'm, I'm sorry. What you, rough day? Is that a little joke you're making at our expense out here? No. I oh, I see saying, that. I said, well, you, just, you saw the match, right? Well, Christian at the yeah. table, he gets a little power at him. He starts taking my moves, doing my thing at me. You guys are all having fun now, aren't you? No, I you know, mean, hold on. he did kind of say... He said what? What did he say? What did he say? Well, he said that you're kind of his puppet. I'm his puppet now. Yeah. You guys are all having fun now. You think, oh, it's all done with it. It's not done. It's like he said, this is not done. These are just little battles, little skirmishes in the war for corruption. That guy's going to be a single champion. We're going to have a Star Wars champion right here. And guess what we still got going on today? Your inner Geepton match. You got that right. That, that belt is going to be where it's going to belong, where it should have been months ago on my waist. You got that, Jen? Yeah. My belt. Well, Ken, it's been real. See you, Jennifer. I mean, uh, the story there is Ken taking defeat well, and, yeah. and Mike Kalinowski pretty much doing what he did, and be, he's angry. He's angry right now. Mm -hmm. I understand. He's angry, but he wants, to, he wants to go in there. He's going in for the Intergeekdom Championship, but he's angry. But Alex Damon is the big story. Yeah. He has laid down the challenge. He is challenging Sam Whitworth for a championship match at Star Wars Celebration in Chicago. Woo! Now, Whip, if Whitworth can do it, it would be amazing. It's not guaranteed. It's not locked down. Sam Whitworth's a busy guy, and that's why he stepped away in the first place. Can it happen? We will find out, but it's something that I think everybody wants to see. Yeah, I mean, we might have to fly in there in person just to check that out. Yeah. That would be something special. Just going to Star Wars Celebration Chicago in general, much less to see an epic matchup like that. Alex Damon adjudicated himself well. I thought he would bring his A game. I've never seen him bring anything less. Ken Knapsack also brought his A game. It's been a great match here, and I guess we're done with the spectacular? Uh, no, we're not, because this isn't even the main event of this particular I have to cancel some appointments. Anywhere. Coming up, right after this, the number one contender match. Uh -huh. Who's going to New York? That's right. You're <laughs> going to have, she you just saw her in video one, half of the reigning team champions. The number was the winner, excuse me, the finalist of the Ultimate Showdown Tournament. Clark Wolf goes head to head with the former two time champion, Dangerous Dan Merle. The winner will play the winner of Roca and Irwin in New York for the season premiere of the Showdown next season, season six. I'm excited. Here we go. Get a cookie in you. We'll be right back. All right, brother. Number one contender match. We all believe in you. Yep. You're taking on Clark Wolf. She ain't an easy one no, to beat. No. no. But we no. know you can do it, brother. I want to see you in New York. I'm going to handle business. You handle business. We do this for a third time. You know it. That's right. Today we're friends. Yeah. We'll worry about next time, next time. Next time. Next time. Guys, thank yeah. you for coming. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you being here. You got no this, man. Yeah, just remember this. Oh, remember this Dan. Forgot. Yeah, don't, don't worry about him. Yeah, don't, don't worry about him. Remember this. Five horsemen, five captains. That ain't no coincidence. That's yeah, right. That's not that's a right. coincidence. Focus warp in. Speed. Yeah. Warp we're on the warp speed. speed today, fellas. I'm going to see you in New York. Damn right. Yep. We're going to see what happens when we get there. But I got to get there. You got to get there. Yeah. All right, You'll guys. get yeah, there. Book man. your ticket today with that match. I wouldn't want anyone else out there besides you guys with me. Oh, so thanks, right. man. We're there. Thank you. Hey, by the way, always. Where the hell's no step? Yeah, we're short of horsemen. Yeah, he said he was gonna be here for a match. He said he's got something to talk to me about. I'm not sure what, right. but he's gonna talk to me. But he'll be here for the match. So don't worry about it. Right, good, good, walking good. out, Danny. You're out walking out, me. So Sweet. we'll see. Yeah. All right, All guys. Right. Let's do this. Let's do, do it. it. Good. Let's go. Who played <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald in Oliver Stone's JFK? I don't. I am gonna take a guess. I don't know the answer. Anthony Hopkins. And your winner, Dangerous Dan Merle! I know the classic Clark Wolf is the crowd favorite. I know it's the audience favorite. I knew it was going to be a tough competition, and uh, it was. You know, I got my clock cleaned. Dan has all the belts for, the, for a reason. Uh, my hat is off to Mr. Merle. Who directed The Burbs? One. Barry Levins. And your winner! Before being remade with Jude Law, which actor starred as Alfie Elkins in 1966 Alfie? Michael Caine. Yeah. And your winner, Dangerous Dan Murrow! Which veteran actor lent his talents to Zootopia as the voice of Mayor Lionheart? J.K. Simmons. And your winner, and new... 
Uh, what nobody knew except for me was that this was a double retirement match because oh. I made up my mind. There's a lot of new blood down there. There's a lot of people that want that belt. And I think now's the perfect time to give all of them a shot at it. Mark Wolf, what is she going to do next? Mia. And your winner! 4X. And your winner! His brother's death. And your winner! School of Rock. And your winner! I have a partner. I found that person. Shire Wolf. We want to join you now. That's amazing. James Eugene Carey. Mike, congratulations, Dustin Hoff. We have Can she do it again? When the belt is on the line, that's the question. Sudden death. The Queens. Card. You got it. And your winner! I'm disappointed, yeah, but I feel like I earned my right to be at that table, and I earned my right to almost have the belt. to play me at the collision. Fine. Five, four. Bronson. Child 44. And you're a winner! I've always said that uh, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter when you play, the score starts at zero every match. You win or you lose. The whole entire league should be afraid now. This is the greatest of all time. And it's gonna prove it to you time and time again. Two. One, hands Fuck. down, Dan. I didn't get it written down in time. I know this. I leave it Can't to your judgment. Can't accept that you don't have okay. anything there at all. So David O. Russell. Oh. And you're the winner. You helped bring me back from where I was, and I'm gonna help bring you back. Then I'm gonna walk out in the spectacular and watch him defend that belt, unless I'm the one playing him. <laughs> The singles tournament begins. The winner faces John the Outlaw Roca at the Spectacular. Straw Dog. And your winner! Greg Berlanti. And your winner! Two. Okay. Congratulations, Ethan. Paul Greengrass. And your winner! You get to play for a chance to be the number one contender. Ready to rumble. And your Dan Merle and Andrako will go right at it again. Princess Mononoke. And your winner! He is now in the spectacular in the number one contender match. South side with me. And your winner, Ethan Big Time Irwin! The answer was South Side with you. South, South Side with you. And now the number one contender match. Clark Wolf faces Dan Merle in a rematch for the number one contender. Winner goes to New York. Dan Merle, the game's different now. I'm a different player now. I'm gonna go out there with Clark Wolf and we're gonna put on a champion show and we're gonna see who comes out on top.
up top there. This is a big match here, Mark. This is the, as we move into the next one, the number one contenders match. The number one contenders match is on the line here. And it is, there's so much. There's so much on the line for this match. Yeah, I mean, you look at this on paper, Christian, and as announcers, we're like, oh, it's only three rounds. This will be a piece of cake. And then you start delving into the history of Dan Merle versus Clark Wolf. Dangerous, classy. They first clashed way back in 2016 when Clark was the challenger to Dan back Rookie, then. Yeah. But now you come into this match. Clark is seated in the favorite chair. Dan Merle is the one that's going to be coming through the curtain first. Who's going to win this match? I don't know, but I do know to expect a lot of fireworks. Well, what a journey the two of them have been on in general, I mean, through their, their league. You know, if you look at Dangerous Dan Merle, obviously a legend in the game who wound up winning two championships. Uh, he he had such an amazing run. He took his first championship from his, his now stablemate Mark Riley, then did the same thing in a triple threat match against Riley and Roca. He defended it right afterwards against Sam Levine, who a lot of people arguably say is the one of the greatest players of all time. He's de defeated Santa Claus. And then, yeah, right, he defeated you. He no. I mean, he defeated Santa Claus. Right. He did it all. He did it all, and then he stepped away from the game for a little bit. He came back. He came back to collision. He lost to Andrew Guy. He The, the tournament with the Founding Fathers, they went one and one. He then entered the ultimate schmodown, and he, first match, looked like, all right, here's Dan Merle, precision, and takes out Stacey Howard. Had a bump in the road as he lost to Ethan Irwin in that se in that semifinals match. But because of the rules here, of the two semifinals losers, it was it was – and Draco versus Merle, and Merle won that via TKO and gets himself to this dance. Clark Wolf, on the other hand, has been on fire this season. You combine what she just did in the in the teams match. She is a combined eight and two this season in teams and singles. She went two and zero. Oh. She beat Ben Bateman in the first round. Then she beat her stable mate Mark and Draco and lost to Ethan Irwin. Not by one question, by one word. Oh. The answer was South Side oh. with you. She said oh. South Side with me. Effing pronouns. But because of it, she is in this number one contender match. And not only do they play the winner of either Irwin or Roca. Where's that going to happen? New York City. They have good salsa. This is the battle for New York City. The season premiere, January. They are going to be going head to head. Whoever wins this with the champion, whoever that might be by the end of today, lot of stuff going on here, Mark. And what's really funny is that you and I were speculating on this potentiality and then whether Classy Clark Wolf was going to be coming off a team victory or team loss, how that might affect her going into this match. This is the situation she finds herself in where some people may say, hey, I'm in Vegas. I just won at this casino. I feel great. Now let me go downtown to Excalibur. Try my luck at $2 blackjack. I've left there empty-handed shirtless. Christian, it can turn in a flash in the movie trivia schmodown. You're not wrong, though. But you're not wrong because it but it's got to be such a relief to Clark. She's coming off of a victory because a loss can really take it out of you. Yeah. The adrenaline can kick in if you have to compete twice, and now she's going in. And I'll tell you, I know Dan Merle. Dan Merle's also probably happy that she won because he wants the best Clark Wolf. He wants Clark Wolf, Dan Merle, rematch here, part two. I'm psyched. I want to hear what they have to say. Here we go. Here we are in the Schmodown Spectacular. This is the event that every competitor in the Schmodown works all year to play in. I'm not gonna lie, this is not how I imagined that I would be here, and I might not be fighting in the fight that I envisioned in my head that I'd be fighting, but that doesn't mean I'm not grateful for the chance to be here. That doesn't mean I'm not ready to play, and that doesn't mean I'm not ready to win. So way back in 2016, I had my first shot at the singles belt. Uh, I was 3-0 and had a pretty good run of it and then had to play Dan in a title match. And it did not go well. Uh, it definitely is, aside from Makuga too, the, the thing that is stuck in my craw. Uh, of the whole of the whole thing. People look at my opponent today, Clark Wolf, and they say, oh, Dan Plater, it's going to be a runaway. It wasn't even close last time. Those people don't know what's going on, and they haven't been paying attention to this game. The last time I played Clark Wolf was eons ago in Schmodown time. And champion to champion, there's no way that I would disrespect Clark and, and pretend like she didn't have a great shot of winning this game. But that also means that I've got to bring my A game, and that's what I've got ready. Dan is an incredible player. He is arguably maybe the best player this league has ever seen, but he's been out of it for a while. And um, if this tournament has taught me anything, I feel warm, I feel loose, I feel like I'm in the right headspace. And um, so I think it could be a close one. 
Clark, this isn't just about the title, and this isn't just about the spectacular, and this isn't just about my win record. This is about respect, and this is about my season, and I intend to make this a winning season. Dan Merle, you are an icon and a legend in this league, and I lost very badly to you a couple of years ago. Uh, the game's different now, I'm a different player now, and uh, I just hope that this is one for the books, and because you are so good, I know that it will be, so good luck. Both of them want New York. Both of them want to get to the dance. And it, we have the t half of the team champion against the former two-time champion. This is a legends match. This is a match that could headline a live event. This is a, a match that could headline the spectacular, could headline collision, could headline anything. And we have it right now. You're getting it in video two for your main event. That's right. The winner of this goes on to Madison Square Garden no, to no, take pictures. Then they're going to go to the theater right. to compete in the Schmodown. Uh, Christian, I feel pretty ready. Do we have any no notable accomplishments to get to, or do we even have time? No, we got them, and here we go. So you got Dan Merle, notable performances and accomplishments, 2016 Player of the Year. He lasted 12 rounds in the 2017 Free For All. He's a former two-time champion. Clark Wolf is the 2016 Rookie of the Year. She is the current team champion. She is also the 2018 Ultimate Schmodown singles finalist. All right, and with that, are you ready? You said he lasted 12 rounds. 12 rounds. I have to get up three times a night to take a leak. I am ready. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. The crowd has maintained their fervor. All right. Three rounds, number one contender match. Here we go. Introducing first, representing the Five Horsemen, led to the ring by Mark Yodi Riley, Jason Justice Inman, and the movie trivia Schmodown champion John Roca, with a record of nine and four, six knockouts. He is the former two-time movie trivia Schmodown champion of the world, Dangerous Dan. South of here. Yeah, I don't see no Dan Merle. Well, we have one of the best as see. he makes it over to used to be on that other side. He's just on that other side, I know. <laughs> say whatever you want yeah. about the rest of the horsemen. People will say things about yeah. the founding fathers as well. Dan Merle, always a classy guy, gives us a nod. He's appreciative of the game and he's come here to win. And his opponent <laughs> representing the Fife Club with a record of eight wins, six defeats. She is the reigning movie trivia Schmodown team champion and the 2018 Ultimate Schmodown finalist, Classy Clark Wolf. Look at the winners just from today already. Emma yeah. Weibrich pushing. Yeah. She's got a lot of pep in her step right now. A lot of pep in her step, and look, the rematch from almost two, almost three years ago at this point, two and a half years That's ago. That's right, we are getting old. I love that they're paying respects here to Dan Merle, and I love the fact that we're a lot All of respect. All class this yeah. match. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's really she, nice. She's look at proud of that belt. belt. She's proud and of that belt. It's the uh, Fight Club making sure that their competitor is situated. Uh, they're such a tight-knit group. Yep. Um, you know, the, the founding fathers, they ride in and out in their Priuses, their horses, what their transportation is, but it seems like the Fife Club, they all travel to and from each match in one big minivan. Sure. Well, here we go, guys. <laughs> the battle for New York begins as we get into it. Round number one, Mark, three rounds. How does it go? In round number one, this is a number one contenders match. So, three total rounds. Round number one goes as so. We're going to ask you eight questions from eight different corners of the movie trivia Schmodown Galaxy. Each question you hear is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask it, please write down your best attempt at the correct answer on the whiteboard in front of you. You can write it down. Give it about 15 seconds. We'll ask you by name to show your answer to the camera at the same time you verbalize it into the microphone. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you need a question repeated, 
it or buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. And you also each have one challenge to be used at any time during the three rounds. That's Clark Wolf, that's Dan Merle, Christian. All right, so with that being said, Dan Merle, are you ready to go? Oh, I'm ready. Clark Wolf, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Let's get ready to schmutz! <laughs> Alright. Here we go. First category is a category of comedies. <laughs> Which film stars Mel Gibson as a chauvinistic ad executive who can hear women's thoughts after a fluke accident? All right, getting everybody warmed up here. Yeah. Let's everybody, let's go outside, toss the old pigskin around. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Clark Wolf. Excuse me. What women want. Yes, Dan. What women want. Tie game. Okay. All right. <laughs> and now the movie trivia portion of the game begins. All right. <laughs> Love you, Chris. <laughs> Your question comes from the world of action adventure. And it is, who played the Sheriff of Nottingham in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? Uh, one of my all-time I know. Can I, I sing it to you? It. Nope. Five. Four. You know it's true. No. Three. Two. Everything one. Stop it. I Dan Merle. <laughs> Alan Rickman. Yes. <laughs> Clark. <laughs> also Alan Rickman. <laughs> yes, that's right. You took with the impression as well. One point yeah. apiece. All right. Next question here. Dramas. Dramas. Which Tarantino film did Chris Tucker appear in? Here's the thing about Brian Adams, though. One of the best voices in rock history, but, in my opinion. No, I just people well, give him credit. Five, four, summer '69. Are you three, kidding? Two, one. Clark. Jackie Brown. Yes, it is. Dan. Jackie Brown. Tie game. Perfect for three as we get to the halfway point in round number one with your fourth question. That comes from the world of animated movies. Movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question. What Saturday Night Live alum voices Roxanne Ritchie, the reporter Megamind falls for in the movie Megamind? We I saw like this in movie. the theater together. We had some corn, I believe, at Universal Five? Um No, Grove, what's the? Four, I don't remember. Three. Universal Studios. Oh, okay. Two, one, pens down. Dan Merle. Tina Fey? Yes, it is. Tina Fey. There you go. Tie game. Right. We should probably remind each competitor if they continue this and they pitch a perfect round one, they get a bonus question. All right, next one. Oscar movies. Three films have tied for the most Oscar wins with 11. Name two out of the three of those films. Uh, uh, guess who called me? The Ralph Oscars. Biscuits. Yeah. The Oscars called again. Are they gonna they do said, it? hey, do you ha can you host it? Yeah, five. I said, not yet. Nice. Four. Not yet. Three. That was Oscar, my next door neighbor. One. <laughs> Pens down, please. And Clark will. I said Titanic and Lord of the Rings Return of the King. You got it right. Yeah. Dan Merle. I said Ben Hur and Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Also yes, got you did. it right. Yes, you did. Five, five. Five, five. They complement each other so well. Y'all should be on a team sometime. Uh. <laughs> Your next question comes from the world of fantasy sci fi. And your fantasy sci-fi question is, who plays Bard the Bowman in the Hobbit trilogy? Now, this is probably where Clark wishes was in a team match. She could lean over to Rachel Cushing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Rachel Cushing knows the answer to this. Five. Four. It's also your nickname in high school. Three. Bard the Bowman. Two. One. Pens down. Pens down. Dan? I didn't have it. It's Stuart. I don't know. Nope. <laughs> and Clark? I, I also don't have it. I didn't get that. It one. is Luke Evans. All right. Luke Evans. All right. I so like a Luke Evans. Full tie game. Only his close friends call him Stuart. All right. Here's your next question, Dan and Clark. Horror slash thriller. Who directed 2006's Hostel? I like that uh, that Hungry Like the Wolf song. Is that Five, the song she came out to before? Four, Duran Duran, or was it? Three, uh, no, she used to come out to uh, Werewolf of London. One, pens down, please. And Clark Wolf. Eli Roth. It is. Dan. Ah! I thought Saw in my head, and I wrote James Oh, Wall. wow. Oh. Wow, so Clark goes up oh. by a point there. That's a mental mistake there right there. There you go, 6 5. So Clark goes up by one point because of the mental mistake. Right. And now we get to the next question here. Wow, big mistake there. Not big mistake, but just again, a mental mistake. No, it's there. okay, Christian. It's a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> if you're done rubbing fair. salt in the wound, we All can right, progress we to the last question in round number one is a Patreon question. This one comes from Jake Hammer, Jake the Hammer. Thank you for supporting the movie trivia, Schmodown. 
We're just the nail. You hammer us home, buddy. He wanted the category of 90s movies. Check out the movie trivia showdown Patreon for your chance to have your name said during a question in the category of 90s movies. The question is, high school student Dave tells his parents that his new friend Link is a foreign exchange student from Estonia in what 90s comedy? Five, four, three, two, one. Dan Merle. Encino Man? You got it. Clark. Encino Man. They're one of the great comedies of the 90s, buddy. Clark Wolf continues on her murderous first round, and she gets another seven points in the first round. But Dan Merle keeping in pace here, only down by one point as we get to round number two. And round number two, how do we go? In round number two, this is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, justice, and could be one competitor's doom. Each competitor gets one spin at that their wheel. You have opponent's choice and spinner's choice back on the wheel this time. If you land on anything else, you have to answer four questions from said movie trivia category. You do have one mulligan, unless, of course, you spin opponent's choice, at which point your opponent will give you what your category is. Each question is worth two points. If you need multiple choice to help you out, the question goes down to one point. We'll give you four options, one of which is correct. And with that, we are going to defer to Classy Clark Wolf, who has a one-point advantage over Dan Merle. That's the slimmest of leads you could possibly have. Clark, would you like to spend first or defer to Dan Merle? I will go first. You're going to go first. She's going to go first. She's been good friends with the wheel. Be and you knock on wood because I don't want to be an announcer's curse here and see what happens. She's, she's, got, a new, she's got a new style. She really whips that thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to say the style comes from all those bars classes. It's either pure bar or something like the that. The audience is yeah. really locked in right now. You can hear the murmuring. Uh, is it going to go past opponent's choice here? It's not going to be opponent's choice. It uh -oh. could be spinner's choice. Do? Martin Scorsese. Scorsese. She's going to okay. spin again? Away she goes. Okay. She launched right into that spin. She did. Yeah. She wants away from the, it. The, the, key, the key to a spin, it's it's in the legs it just more depends. so than it is. Each player has a different style on how to do it. No, I'm telling you how oh. to spin the wheel. You haven't won in a long time. <laughs> it's not because of the wheel. Oh. It's because scores and soundtracks uh -oh. are just scores. Uh oh. Coming of age. Coming of age. Mm. All right. So. And I will remind everybody out there that that wheel that Clark just spun is a Patreon-sponsored wheel. Thank you to Wade Carter, ladies and gentlemen. Wade Carter, loyal supporter of the Movie Trader Showdown patron. Yeah. His sponsored wheel slices are horror movies and new releases. Clark wasn't able to get either one of those, but she does get coming of age films. She might come of age here in this match if she can ace the category. Well, here you go, Clark Wolf. Four questions. In Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which hockey team jersey does Cameron wear throughout the movie? Uh, multiple choice. A, Chicago Blackhawks. B, Montreal Canadiens. C, Detroit Red Wings. D, Ottawa Senators. The Red Wings. That is correct. One point. There you go. Question two. Who played Juno's stepmother in 2007's Juno? Jennifer Garner. That's incorrect. Stepmother's incorrect. Good. The steal? Allison Janney? That's correct. Oh. Big steal. Right. Okay. Big steal. Tripped right. up with the stepmother there. It's always the dang right. stepmothers. Right. She was the mother who was going to adopt. Uh, what color is John Miner's iconic 1932 Ford Coupe that he races in American Graffiti? White. It's incorrect. Steel. Blue. For yellow. Yellow. All right, last question yellow. for Clark. Who directed 2017's Call Me By Your Name? Oh, gosh. Well, uh, five. I'm afraid about the Four. Uh, repeat the question. Who directed 2017's Call Me By Your Name? Five. Luca Gudagnino. We'll yep. accept it. Luca yep. Gudagnino is correct. Two points. Two points. Dan Merle is now going to spin. Dan Merle spins here. Clark has used one JTE rule. Dan has not used one yet. And Clark hit a category she didn't necessarily love, but she navigated right. her way to a lead. Yep. Dan Merle did get a two-point steal. Keep eyes on that. It's yeah. a three-round match, and that could really come back to haunt Clark in round three. Could be, unless, again, he lands on something that yeah. she is good He's at. He's got that mulligan, but here comes opponent's choice. Are we going to get that far? It looks like it could be fantasy sci-fi for Dan Merle. Fantasy sci-fi for Dan Merle. 
he going to attempt fate or is he going to go for it? He's going to go for it. Okay. Go for it. All right. I'm so keeping he's gonna anything go for that's it. not opponent's choice this season. <laughs> All right. That's fine. All right, Dan Merle. Here we go. Question number one. In the world of fantasy sci-fi, Dan, your first question. In the world of fantasy science fiction, what is the name of the last human city on Earth in the Matrix trilogy? Zion. That's it correct. is, in fact, Zion. Yep. It's the name of a lot of basketball-playing high schools as well. All right, your next question. Fantasy sci-fi. You're currently tied with Clark. This will give you the lead if you get it right. A group of scientists try to track down and trap a killer alien seductress before she can successfully mate with a human. In what 1995 sci-fi horror film? Species. Certainly is Species. Yeah. Natasha Henstridge on a mission. And Dan Merle emerges with a two-point lead over Clark Wolf. Still two left in his slate. Your penultimate question in round number two. This star from the Star Trek franchise played Guinevere's father, King Leo de Grance, in 1981's Excalibur. Hmm. Multiple choice. Is it A, Patrick Stewart? B, Leonard Nimoy, C, Peter Weller, or D, Bruce Greenwood? Patrick Stewart. We'll give him a point. Yeah, that's it. All right, last one. All right. Your last question, Dan, in the world of fantasy science fiction. What race of beings do the elf like Jen and Kira belong to in The Dark Crystal? Five. Gelflings. It is, in wow. fact, Gelflings. Impressive. Impressive round from Dan Merle. Gets himself a five-point lead going into round number wow. three. What a battle. Clark was up by one. Dan is mm -hmm. now up by five. As we get into round number three, we've seen comebacks b bigger than this before. You've got to think about that steal, though, because yep. it was a four-point yep. swing from one to the other one. And as we move into round three, this is the last match. We've had a lot of championship matches and some yet to come. It's a three-round match for this particular Competition and Clark Wolf, Dan Merle, you each are going to give us three numbers that range from one to 20. First question is going to be a two pointer, next one three pointer, the last one is a five point question. We'll start asking the questions to Clark, but we get the first series of numbers from Mr. Dan Merle. What do you like, sir? I'll take number two, number nine, and number 17, please. Two, nine, and 17 for Dan Clark. 4, 12, 19. 4, 12, and 19 for Clark Wolf. She will be up first, trying to avoid the TKO here as we start with category number four from Clark Wolf. All right, Clark. Category four. 80s movies. 80s movies. All right. What was the name of the detective hired to investigate Jessica Rabbit in Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Eddie Valiant. That is correct. Eddie. Yep. And now Clark, Hoskins. Clark attempts to tie the game. She's going to attempt to tie the game here and goes right back to coming of age movies. Coming of age movies. Mm, boy. Here we go. All right. Here's another one. Which 2009 Star Trek alum starred in the indie coming of age film like crazy? Five. Four, three. Repeat the question. It's number two. Which 2009 Star Trek alum starred in the indie coming of age film like crazy? Chris Pine. Correct. Looking for Anton Yelchin. Uh. Anton Yelchin. All right. So now Clark Wolf has to hit her five pointer. If she hits the five, it bounces back to Dan. But if she misses it, Dan Merle will win via TKO and will be heading to New York to play either Ethan Irwin or John Roca. Does he have to pay or do we pay for him to go to New I York? I think we're going to pay for him. Got All right, here we go. Here we go. Clark, DiCaprio. DiCaprio is your five-pointer. DiCaprio. Which movie star had one of his early feature film roles as Mickey in the Leonardo DiCaprio film, The Basketball Diaries? Brendan Fraser. And your winner, by way of technical knockout, Dangerous, Dan Murrow. The answer was Mark Wahlberg. Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. That was 
is him transferring from the funky bunch into the actor that we know and love today. And you talk about who we know, who we love. These are two competitors that I would consider yeah. in that category, Christian. Dan Murr, Clark Wolf. They came, they saw, they answered a lot of questions correctly. It went Dan Merle's way, yep. and we are going to be getting him a ticket to New York City. Dan Merle's going to New York to play either Ethan Irwin or John Rucker, but Clark Wolf, you look at where she's walking out, she's walking out with that belt on her shoulder because, mm -hmm. look, what a battle, what a match. Um, it was it was tight in that first one. It's just Clark at the end there, couldn't come up with the answer. And the steel, really, the steel really. I think that changed the whole game. It, it can affect your psyche, Dan Merle, not blinking, spinning fantasy sci-fi, a category I think he's somewhat yeah. comfortable with. He seemed prepared for the round three that was to come. He never had to answer any questions. That's the way the Schmodown goes occasionally. You want to look at something, though. Dan Merle now is 10. He is 10 and 4. Okay. He is 10 and 4, and he has 7 knockouts. 10 and 4, 7 knockouts. That's pretty good. The question is, who's he, who does he want to play? Because he's got, he's got unfinished business with both. So we're going to find out in that, in that interview here with both Clark Wolf and Dan Merle, there's Jen Sturger. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Dangerous Dan Mural. Oh, my God. Yeah. I think that was a match that we all wanted to see. We love watching you compete against people like Clark, but I feel like I got a little glimpse of, like, retro Dan today. Maybe. I mean, I, I, I thought that match was going to go the distance. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? And another, I, I was lucky enough to be here for Clark and Rachel's uh, team's match. And if we had played the questions that they got on that match, uh, she would be standing here right now as the winner. And I'd be on the other side of this. Uh, like, like they said, it is, it is, a lot of it is you know the questions or you don't. I happened to get some that I knew. But I also got lucky. Uh, I made a big mental mistake. In that in that game, I I heard hostile and I saw saw in my brain yeah. and I wrote down the wrong direct, director. And in a match against an opponent like Clark, you are extremely lucky to overcome something like that. So uh, I'm just happy to have the win and then get to sit back and see who I'm going to get to face off against next year. Absolutely, but you did have those steals that came in pretty handy too. Yeah, I mean the that is sort of the the secret of uh, the game as as far as making up ground. I was behind. If you're able to pick up a steal, even just one point in round two, that's really going to help you in the end game. Uh, I, and conversely, if 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 you miss something and you, and you get it stolen, that that doesn't help. So um, lucky to pick up a steal there and be able to uh, to go to the end. I know winning today must feel pretty great, especially coming off the, the controversial loss to corruption. I know you and Roca and myself were very emotional. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. No, I, think the, I, was you know, I got emotional I was first. I, was I got emotional first. I, I was just I can't uh, watch upset. you cry, man. That's what it comes down to. I can't yeah. watch anybody tear up. I get, I'm very <laughs> empathetic. Um, but how does this win feel coming off that? Um, it feels, you know, uh, Chance and Mike played a fantastic game. Uh, I, I've said elsewhere, but I'll say it here on the show, that if, if I were the judge that they had called to make those calls, I think I probably would have made the same ones. Um, so, shh, internet. <laughs> to, to be honest, it's, it's a lot better when I look back at the season, considering how it started. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to be able to end the season with a win. Do you feel like you're finally like finding your... like? Your groove? I, I think so. I, it's, you know, the game changed a lot while I was gone. And that's not to take away from uh, Guy. That's not to take away from Ethan. It's not to take away from Chance and Mike and anybody that, that beat me this season. But it, I, I was on a bit of a learning curve as far as understanding the tone of the game. And the psychological the tempo, warfare that goes into it The now. psychological warfare, the strategy. Yeah. You know, I, the, no one was doing strategy, really, when, when I first started playing the game. And so I feel better about my understanding of the game, uh, my knowledge, when I should take risks, when I shouldn't take risks, uh, and I'm gonna continue uh, over this next few months, uh, leading it up to New York to continue hopefully to map things out in my head, try to fill in some, uh, some holes in my knowledge because no matter who wins today, I'm gonna have my hands full of New York. Well, while Mark and Christian are booking your flights, uh, I gotta ask you. Yeah. New York is going to be a kind of a weird experience for you because you're either going to have to face Ethan Irwin, who you've already faced once before, and mm -hmm. we know how that turned out. Yeah. Uh, or you're going to have to face John Roca. Yeah. And your teammate, your horseman. I know. Like, That's a, this is like a real Sophie's choice here. It, it really is. I don't. I, I don't have a preference. I mean, Ethan is a machine, but we have also seen that when Roca 
is fired up. And when Roka's got that passion behind him, which he always does, he's almost unstoppable. So I'm really facing two opponents that look unstoppable. I don't know how either one of them is going to come out on top today without us having a three hour long match, if I'm being honest. I can't be here that late. I have things to do. Exactly. I mean, it'll be, it may be an empty <laughs> studio. I don't know. But I do think that whoever it is, you know, I'm not going to have the advantage. You know, if I had been able to uh, play today, um, you know, you're at the end of the season. People have been playing a lot of matches. There's been a lot of tournaments going on. And now, no matter who it is, they're going to be rested. They're going to be ready to go. But this I is will the grind. This is the this Super is the Bowl of movie trivia. Yeah. And it was a pleasure watching you compete today. And congratulations. You Thank had a well-done season. And I know that it was one of a lot of ups and downs for you. And I hope that you're feeling on the upswing now. I am. I, I'm very happy and very lucky and very fortunate to get a win today. And I'll see whoever wins the title fight today in New York. And be ready, because I'm bringing my A game. <laughs> see you in New York, guys. I'm back with Clark Walton in the Fife Club. And Clark, you've had a long day today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can say both of the matches that we saw you play today were hard matches yeah. and no <laughs> fault matches. At the end, I mean, did fatigue just kind of set in the match? I mean, listen, you either know it or you don't. And I got hit with some questions today that I, this, this match that I did not know, flat out. Like, I can't, I can't deny that. I am also exhausted. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, my brain is definitely a little fried. Uh, but you know, it just, yeah, today just wasn't my day, and that's why. No, the second half of the day wasn't your day. True. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. But yes. I, I think what it came down to was that match was just steals. You know, those steals really hurt you, and that's what yeah. honestly puts you back. Other than that, you were right in the thick of that. And especially hanging with someone like Dan Merle, I mean, who played like old Dan Merle, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. one that's, that we all know. I think that that speaks volumes for how your play has transformed this season. I mean, thanks. I, you know, look, I, it's funny. I, I always say before I play that I just don't want to get knocked out. And the only times I've ever been knocked out is when I play today. <laughs> so I mean, maybe the third time's a charm. I don't know. But in terms of like the, the Juno question, uh, I, if I had gone to multiple choice, I would have said Jennifer Garner and it would have been, you know what I mean? Like I just, I just learned the fact wrong and, or didn't remember and it's fine. Uh, honestly, I, you know, we say it all the time, but you either know it or you don't. I, I'm not a, I'm not ashamed of the match I played and mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah. So there you go. Who do you think he has a better chance against though? Can I ask you that? Yeah. I mean, Ooh. the thing that everyone's I, eyebrows did this collectively. <laughs> well, the thing that I love about Dan is that Dan is cool as a cucumber, mm. and uh, so is Ethan. Uh, they both are chill AF, and uh, so I actually think that that could be a really fun live match um, because you know, you, you're not going to get anything. It's going to be Battle of the <laughs> Poker Faces. Yeah. That's right. Oh, no. And and if one of them did start to show a little bit of emotion, like, you know, like that, that would be like, ooh. Uh, so so that's that's kind of the matchup that I would like to see. Absolutely. Uh, Dan play every match as Alan Rickman. Uh, that was really great. That for me, well, like, listen, I know Dan Merle is great at movie trivia, but his best moment in the entire <laughs> showdown was answering Alan Rickman as Alan <laughs> Alan Rickman, may you rest in peace. Oh man, I I just have to say though, Clark, you know, with the, the season closing today, it's been an honor watching you become the player that you become this season. You know, I've always had a lot of respect for you. I think I can speak for a lot of us when I say that, but watching how your mental game and like your preparedness has changed. I mean, I think I can say that you have elevated yourself in this league to, I mean, I'm just so proud of you. Thank you. I really oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> I took it away. I, I'm sorry. I, it's hard no. to, it's old habits die hard. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have more interesting things to say anyway. Give me both of the mics. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and you know, I, I the, thing, the thing that I th hope that the people watching understand is that I, I'm more interested in playing the game, and uh, and winning is great. Winning is like best case scenario, yeah. but sometimes, sometimes you don't play great. Sometimes you do. Uh, I did the best I could in this match, and that's just sort of like it is what it is. There was nothing. There, there's nothing I would have or could have done differently. Yeah.
I was just going to say, there is a difference in playing and losing when you lose because you knew it, but you couldn't get there. Yeah. And you beat yourself up, and then you meet, miss the next question, and then you're in your head. That never happened. You are... Talk about cool as a cucumber or cool as fuck. Like, you are that player. Absolutely. You know, and this was just a case where a handful of questions lined up that you didn't know. Yeah. Happens to everybody. 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 It's happened to Dan. Yes. So, like, you Happen know. Every yeah. <laughs> Hold your head high. We're very proud of you, Thank Five Club. You. And, you know, you'll be back. Thank you. Yes, two F bombs from Rachel oh, today. I know. And I'm on a roll. It's, and it, like I said, it's been an absolute treat. And I think that. 2019 is going to be the year that the only person that can beat Clark Wolf is Clark Wolf. Hey, that's sweet. Thanks, Jen. Look, Dan Merle saying that of course he wants to play his buddy John Roca there, and for part three of their of their trilogy, if, if it was going to go down, mm -hmm. but he also wouldn't mind seeing Ethan Irwin because Ethan Irwin, w w to, you know, TKO Dan in the singles tournament. So what a way for revenge to take the title off of Ethan in New York. So you're going to have Dan Merle versus either John Roca or Ethan Irwin. So once again, schmodownlive.com. <laughs> get those tickets now because I can't imagine they're going to be available for much longer after that. Dan Merle is going to be playing either Ethan or John Roca, but Clark Wolf, again, yeah. what a run this season. She walks away today. She doesn't come up going to New York or playing in the singles championship, but she walks away the team champion still. Hell of a match today, and she had a hell of a season. One of the great competitors we have ever had in the singles, maybe the best team we've ever seen in the history of the movie Trivia Schmodown, wow. dating back to 1947. Wow. And Christian, it's just been an honor to see her and Dan Merle compete head-to-head, -head, and that is the way that we close out video number two. But don't go anywhere just yet. Stick around the parts of you two, because vid three, it's right around the corner, and that will contain the inner geekdom championship and the five round championship for the singles title to determine who Dan Murrow will be facing once he goes to New York City. Will it be John Roca? Will it be Ethan Irwin? I guess we're going to find out today. We're going to find out pretty soon. So guys, thank you very much. Once again, sign up to Patreon today. It's patreon.com slash schmodown. Check out the schmodown rundown. Do all that. But the most important thing, you got to go watch the inner geekdom championship. You got to go watch the singles championship. So get your pizzas done. Go to take your back and break and go check it out do it now we'll catch you next go to the bathroom